We are a table of contents. So today we have the pleasure uh, to have Rosalie, you, uh, as a guest for our um, late lunch uh, lecture series. Um, just a short introduction before she starts presenting our project. She's an artist and researcher based in New York. She was also in London um, as an artist uh, um, for the uh, Science and Technology Society residency. Uh, she works for digital artifacts, uh, virtual sites, uh, using photogrammetry um, as a one technique, but she will share with us several types of um, uh, mediums that she uses to construct her environments. And uh, she, you, uh, she wants to, um, today she's gonna present two projects, Nothing Together and Photographic Meeting Club. Um, her work takes many form, uh, from collaborative workshops to resin sculptures to data visualization. Um, so we welcome uh, Rosalie and um, please feel free to ask any questions on the chat. Um, and then we're going to have time at the end of the lecture uh, to discuss together. Uh, Rosalie, feel free to share the screen if you want. And whenever okay. you're ready. Awesome. Yes, let me share oh, the screen. Can, you, can everyone hear me okay? Yes, we can hear you. Yes. Just one second. Hi. Um, hello, everyone. Thank you, Sabrina, for the introduction of both Lorenzo and AA Summer School for having me. And thanks, everyone, for your time today. Um, my name is Rosalie Yu. I am a Taiwanese artist and researcher. I'm now based in New York. And before I start, I want to talk a little bit about myself. Um, in the past, my work has been supported by communities such as New Inc. under New Museum, the Incubator for Artists, NYU ITP, it's a new media program. Um, I was also a researcher at Columbia Journalism School. And over there, we talk a lot about how technology, data, and computation could help with finding and telling different kinds of story and the ethics associated with them. So I hope this gives you a little bit um, context where my practice is situated. Um, so when Sabrina and Lorenzo first reached out to me with this idea of table as a platform and metaphor for care, that actually really resonated with me. And I thought that tied nicely with what I've been thinking of working as an artist. Um, so in my work, uh, share intimacy and care are the common things that thread all my work together. And to me, care is about giving and receiving. It's about coming together to learn and to form communities. And my role as an artist is to facilitate the spaces such as in classrooms and in online platforms where we explore these concepts and often with the help of photo techniques and digitizing technology. The photo techniques I study the most is called photogrammetry. I like to see it as stitching images into surfaces, a craft that sits between photography and sculpture. So like you see here, I made this diagram that um, compare photography to photogrammetry uh, photography is one person, one point of view, looking at an object. And photogrammetry could be multiple perspectives, multiple people at the same time or over a period of time. And I find that uh, difference is very interesting. And so you might ask why using these tools? For me, I'm very drawn to the, to the accessible and collaborative aspect of these tools. I'm also interested in how technology could be taught, unlearned, and reframed, or even intervene with feminist methodologies. So when I say feminist, it's less about gender and identity, but it's more about using feminism as a framework to look at the complex power relations. The technology we are using was created by whom, for whom, with whose interests, in mind or ignored, and who has the access and who's denied. So one of my 
motivation is to challenge the dominant logic of this digitizing tools to care and collaborative process. I see people still coming in. Hi. Um, so just to um, just to come back to the to the photogrammetry. So I know that a lot of people who sit uh, who see the audience as students uh, at AA school actually learn how to do photogrammetry. It's basically uh, you walk around an object and you take in all the details of an object, and then the software is able to kind of stitch all the photos together into a three-dimensional object. So for me, I'm very interested in uh, exploring the expressive opportunity, not just for creating photorealistic models. And the typical way of generating photorealistic scans resemble the peeling of the skin and sewing them back together. The action is a lot similar to extracting information from the world. By the same time, scanning is about getting all the information from the surface of an object, resulting in something hollow, opening up a new world from the inside. It's somehow feminine and intimate. I don't know if you ever like look at the scan from the inside. It's almost like you turn the world inside out. I think Nasios was uh, showing me a rock that he used to scan. And it's, it's interesting that if you scan a rock, you can be inside a rock or inside anything that you want or inside a person, yeah. Um, so through this emerging techniques, explore and can be visible something that's not and also new ways of apprehending the world. So to me, the limitations of some 3D scanning technology make it very similar to early photography. Uh, for example, the long exposure time, the person has to be completely still for, um, for a long time. So for example, this, picture from Wiki, it's, um, it's a person um, having a neck piece because for long exposure for the photography, you have to hold your pose for a long time. And on the right side, it's photogrammetry and infrared scanning um, with a more traditional way of scanning that a person have to stand still, uh, have to close their eyes and not move. So the model that you scan have this lifeless qualities. And so Although photogrammetry and more traditional 3D scanning are supposed to be used for still objects, in the past I have experimented with how intimacy, just the distance, distance between two bodies over time could be measured. So inspired by photogrammetry as a liminal medium between photography and sculpture, I borrow their aesthetics and vocabularies to express the feeling of discomfort and alienation brought on by this intimacy, this monstrous enclosure from the embrace. So for me, the capture of closeness is a way for me to start to form description for the emptiness or for the, the lack of physical contact between people back home in my hometown Taiwan. And even now, the sculptures also take on different meanings as the pandemic changed our understanding of intimacy, of the distance between bodies. Sorry. Hmm. Yeah, sorry, some of the other sculptures. As you can see here is, um, you can kind of see is um, this, this aesthetic is called the scanning, which is, um, if you see, for example, the sculpture, um, just give me one second. I think my computer is being a little bit slow today. Let's see. Can you hear and see me okay? Yes. Okay. Um, this is interesting. Okay, so yeah, so that's some of the sculptures that I made in the past. Um, so, so this project was later adopted as a workshop that, con that continue exploring shared and platonic intimacy and as a form of care that we can give and receive from other people. And this 
Uh, Knowing Together is a longer term commission by Teachers College at Columbia University, a school for teachers, basically. So the goal was to research how 3D technology could be used and taught in a collaborative way and have students to come back to see their creation in the form of an exhibition. So to explain, imagine uh, you are in a workshop. We first learn how to give and receive uh, care and attention from a stranger through prolonged eye contact and embrace. So you have to like look at a person for like one minute and hug a stranger for five minutes. And for a second part of the workshop, uh, we stand in a circle and a pair of strangers platonically embrace while the other participant surrounds the pair, take turns snapping a photo and pass the camera to the next person. So this next video will kind of give you an idea of the atmosphere of the process. I'll defer to how do you want to embrace. Okay, ready? Yep. clapping at the end because the lens of the embrace is determined by the capturing process. Sometimes like pass along just one camera takes about 10 minutes and then everyone is very tired. And then the people who is uh, in the middle embracing is also very tired. And here you can see a bird's eye view of showing how, where the, everyone is positioned. And here, is a diagram of showing how the camera travels throughout the whole process. So the outside circle is people elevated, people inside, in the middle is people standing on the floor, inside people sitting on the floor. So everything happened during the process is also being recorded. So this is one example that um, doing half, half of the capture the, the hug just like let go, it's just too much. And um, so you can see um, in this data diagram on the right side, there is no data, there is no photographs. So resulting in this model on the right side is completely open. And this is another example. Um, this subject, her name is Autumn. She, um, she wanted to do this, um, she wanted to do this workshop because uh, she kind of associated with, um, uh, she can identify with um, the, my talk before the workshop, which is, you know, talking about culture that doesn't have a lot of physical intimacy between friends and family. And when she was doing the, uh, she was doing the capture, she said she's so nervous and then and then her legs kind of goes to sleep, sleep in the end. And you can kind of see from her left leg is kind of shaky. And so uh, a lot of, uh, this is people who's, who's um, capturing on the side. They are kind of fidgeting their fingers. They're waiting for a long time. And so a lot of printing process is actually about how to preserve all the imperfection during the capture. How can I turn that into a physical object or preserve them. And so this part, I'm showing you some of the iterations that I did. So in order to print something that's not watertight, um, I cannot print like the method on the left. Um, so on the right, I try to kind of extract them from the dome shape. It's very hard to see what's inside this way. So in the end, I actually, generated thousands of cubes on each face and then and then generated 
um, in, the, in the 3D modeling software, one model is the cubes. The other model is the dome extracted with all these holes um, um, suspended in this dome. And when I print that, I print them all together. This is with the help with uh, um, um, LaGuardia Studio and NYU we, uh, that make this happen. And then, so the print is, uh, uh, the two models are printed together and then went through um, hours and hours of sanding and buffing. Each of them takes about 10 hours. So you can see the inside. And so that's like some of the results that come out from this. So there was total seven output. Um, this is the first one is, this is the pair that actually knows each other is a mother and son. And this is the second model that you just saw. This, um, the, the water shape, the dripping shape is actually um, um, the, the subject on the left, her, she has a crotch. So intricate shape is very hard to scan. And so you see this liquid shape um, in the model. I don't have a model for that. And this is number five. And later on, we experiment with people actually leaning onto each other. And this is um, number six. And the last one that um, it's because people are sitting on the ground and then leaning on each other. And also people have more, pra more practice. So the surface quality is a lot calmer. And this is the last print. So for me, this experiment is my attempt to use photogrammetry as a way to reject a dissenter, the solitary observer, the solitary photographer, and provide provides a framework to think about how does the mechanics of stitching multiple perspectives offer an alternative model for living and for knowledge forming. And um, this experiment are also a way for us to play with the scientific idea of precision and how the void in data or the missing data actually can shape more lights into the whole experience. <clears throat> so here you see the, the end, the, the exhibition where we invite the students to come back. So the whole data set is displayed behind the model uh, for each model. And then you can see where they are in there's a diagram so it can correspond to where the pictures are. And then the, everyone who was part of the process were also credited. So the next project, Photograph and Eating Club, is very much a continuation of Knowing Together uses scanning as a way to create data portrait for, of us in our spaces. And it's also about exploring the feminine side of this digitizing tools and reclaiming power over how technology interfaces with our lives, especially during the pandemic. So as we spend more time online since last year, I've been thinking about how photo techniques and collaborative methods can make us more mindful uh, of our surroundings and provide alternative ways to connect and check in with each other. So during the, during the um, pandemic, actually a lot of people reach out to me and ask me, how do, I, how do I create a digital 3D object and how do I send this to other people and how do I use the, the software or devices I have available that's low cost or it's free? And I'm also, also um, I was also thinking about uh, the, the social function of things like book club or film club, where there is like a set time every month or every week that people come together, that it creates some kind of routine. So um, that gave me the idea to create this project, Photographic Meeting Club. So um, 
it's a the photography club is a series of virtual workshop about photogrammetry using devices we already have at home. And different from the previous project, we bring this shared bodily experience to people's very intimate homes. And the main meeting club is about community community building and reframe scanning as a digital craft. So I was very inspired by the name um, Knitting Circles. It's like a, a group of women come together and then they make something by hand. It's not really about the scarf that they're making or the clothes they're making. It's really about, you know, just people come together to gossip about things and you check in on each other. And then there's also another word for it, which is bit and bit. So in, in our workshop, instead of yarn, we need to gather images. So we connect the mechanics of scanning with the gesture of stitch and repair. And what you see here is how the photo are stitched together inside the software for photogrammetry. So during the workshop, we discuss how our relationship to, par to parts of our space changed during the pandemic. And we then play with ways to observe our familiar spaces and using our cameras to pay close attention and capture these findings. The goal is to have a new understanding of our space through learning and to learning the science of measurement that can also be rooted in our lived and embodied experience. So just to illustrate what, I, what I'm describing here, um, I prepare a, a few different instructions for different workshops. For example, um, I will ask everyone to do hand drawing of objects in their space without looking at them. And based on their drawings, to walk around and scan these objects. Here I will play a video clip of the process. Imagine this rectangle is the bird's eye view of your laptop. And without, and look, without looking away, away use, your use your computer, computer as, as an anchor, anchor allow us to draw the contour or the shape, shape of your room. Mine's only so big because I'm outside. I'm not trying to... So what you hear, see here is actually people drawing together on one canvas. And then the left is one workshop, right is one workshop. Without looking away again, and now please draw, draw what's, what's next to these walls. walls. My window over here. And draw... And um, please draw the shape, draw the of, your shape desk of your desk where you are, you are talking, talking to us from, and the and chair, chair you're sitting, sitting on. on. This is my light. Um, this is my chair. And I'll please draw what's door. in the space beyond in beyond what's be, um, and draw the background that's visible from the zoom, zoom screen. Oops, I made my couch kind of big. <laughs> I want you to look at your paper drawing and see what objects you drew. And for each of these objects, I would like you to walk around. So that's that an example. And another example would be, I will give instructions that um, such as imagine your phone, your phone sprays out, sprays out paint or walk like a Roomba, or that's maybe more close to our daily experience. And here is the video. To that. Oh, this, uh, this was the, oh, um, everyone's drawing. I put them next to each other. This is what it looks like. And then this is what I'm saying about phone spray cell ping. And here is the video. Spray cell paint. And what you would do is to spray paint in a line that goes around the room. So you can also imagine this, your room is a mixing bowl and you're using a spatula to like scrape all the information out. And then there should be overlap in between the photos. You can think about it, about it as stitching or fish scales so that the pair of photographs has, have enough features to, uh, to stitch together. So the last example is I, I give instruction to this participant. I asked Andrew to walk through his apartment as how he would in a normal day from morning to night. And this is one of the examples.
my uh, screen is going a little bit slow at the moment. Um, a little bit time. So basically, he is walking in his room, and then um, and one of the things that people uh, describe to me is um, they they tend to notice notice things that they don't usually notice. Like for example, there is this participant. She's a mom, and she said, "I usually only look down the floor because." Everything is so messy. There is so much stuff from my kids, but this is like the first time I actually look up and then I see other parts of my room that I actually just like, a lot of people psychologically block them off in day-to-day -day life. Um, here, let me just reshare my screen again. Um, So every morning, the first thing I see is this easy chair. My cat likes to sit there because um, he can catch a sunbeam. Um, there's a short little hallway that connects my bathroom and my bedroom and ends in the living room. Um, one wall of my living room is sort of devoted to like a cat station. So he has like his food, his water. Um, Right next to the kitchen, there's a wall um, with like sort of a little picture window, but right past that picture window is a dining room table, um, which I don't eat at because I sort of turned it into a home office. The lighting is a better for Zoom meetings. Um, you know, due to the pandemic, my job has been cut a little bit. I notice as I'm walking around doing this recording that I have a good collection of strange things, which, you know, when you're in the same place every day, they, they fade into the background. Um, it's got a mix of like weird wooden masks from Hawaii and then like a weird drawing of a chicken and then you know, like abstract circles drawn by a robot, puppets I've made, or like little f rubber finger monsters that you put on your finger, or like a ceramic rooster. So <laughs> it's fun, but sometimes um, sometimes that fades into the background when you see them every day. So after the workshop, I visualize the participant space and movement using photogrammetry software, I plot their movement into data portraits. So as you can see here, the white dots are where the photograph were taken and line is the capturing path. And here is another example. Um, I always um, record the location of the laptop, which is the black box. And then the star is the triangle and you can kind of see how this person moves. And then the outside is the shape of the room calculated by the software. And here is another example of, um, the, this is the drawing that you see earlier, which is on the right. And on the left is the corresponding data portrait for each drawings, for each person in their space. So you can kind of see how people move in their space, where they choose to capture, and through this, maybe we can start surface some embodied knowledge that belongs to only the person who's living in that space. And after the workshop, I also um, make all this creations from people into a little zine and then give to the participants. And here is another example. This is two person doing the same workshop in the same space. And the left is both of their drawing, the right is their get up portraits. Um, here is another example. There is five portraits, five participants from this workshop. And um, here I use the laptop as an anchor and uh, I overlaid different participants' data on the top of each other 
um, use the location of the laptop. I thought that's kind of interesting because that's how we talk to each other and uh, the process of making the, the room, is, it's almost like a reveal that um, um, I heard this saying one, once, it's like you, have, you always see news anchor and then you realize the news anchor is wearing shorts and then the rest of the room is like super messy because we only see um, this perspective. And so, yeah, so, and this thing in this uh, visualization, I actually hand drawn it on the film, uh, on the film transparent film, and then I overlay on the top of each other. So here um, you, you can see how I actually um, trace the path. Um, I actually exported all the XYZ camera angles from the soft, the photogrammetry software I use and import it into a 3D game engine. This is Unity. And then I then have a script to, to link all the XYZ coordinate together. And this is another example. And I am actually now working at a show coming out with uh, uh, Berkeley University to kind of explore this portrait in three dimension to see if there's any way I can turn it into a sculptural piece, like ways I can print them using 3D printers. And as part of the workshop, I also provide a tutorial for participants so they can replicate the process to do things for themselves. And this revealing of the process is how I think about care and access when I'm dealing with this technology and to reject the idea of technology as a haunted and mysterious black box that no one understands and things just magically happen. And so I think this part of like tutorials and you know, workshop and classes are a very important part of my practice. So, yeah, right now um, it's uh, 03. I can, I can um, also keep on talking about the project, which, uh, which Sabrina Lorenzo first may reach out to me about, which is this project that's called A Ritual of Habits. Um, um, so it's actually, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Yes, please. <laughs> um, yeah, so I guess the, the last two projects was more about, you know, how I think about intimacy care and how I use uh, digitizing tools. And this um, ritual of habits is for two years, I created a personal archive of suites uh, through the ritual of photogrammetry. It began as a meditation and ritual reflection on the death in the family and how the significance of sugar follows my family's history and Taiwan's colonial past as a major sugarcane producer. So from an anthropological point of view, I'm interested in capturing the patterns that might emerge over a long period of time. Um, it might it be new consumption habits, my relationship to sweets, or even how my friend interact with me at dinner tables. So what you see here is the um, table, the left being the beginning. And um, so here is actually in action how they populated over time. It's also augmented reality. So I'm very interested to, you know, to see in this process how my friends interact with me at dinner tables. It's almost like a social experiment. Does that say we're about to eat a cake in order to preserve every angle? Um, the people who's eating with me will actually take the phone and then take photo, take my phone and take photo from the other side of the dinner table. 
or turn on their flashlights or even assemble candles from other table to illuminate the scene. And so the capturing process is a lot like a performance because I have to do it on the go. It's not in the studio. And my friends play along with this ridiculous rituals with me. It's very much like a social experiment. So a spin-off of, the, of this project about food and sharing was during the pandemic, I crowdsourced video of food from France and, and I asked them to send videos of their food to me and then I will populate them as like a big dinner, different dishes. <laughs> And then I can argue then, argument then on my table. It's kind of like a fun project to do. And this is another example. This is my friend Pam, who is very good at cooking. So every time she cooks, she always makes those videos to, for me. They don't think. Yeah, so this, again, all the archives that my friend contributed. It's like a way for us to, um, uh, to connect because I actually left, um, left New York for a while, even before the pandemic, because I have some problem with uh, immigration. And so um, there was Zoom fatigue even before Zoom. <laughs> yeah. And... Yeah, that's about the projects I would like to share. I have other projects I'm happy to talk about. It might not uh, directly connect to table of contents, but if you're interested, I can also talk to them with you. Thank you, Rosalie. Thank you very much for this. It was super clear. And I think that if everyone wants to get in touch with you, we can forward them the email, if that is all right with you. Mm -hmm. Um, yes. I don't know if there are any questions from the from the audience. What I really enjoyed was the fact to see this uh, tenderness uh, of movements that we can recognize uh, in the particles of the finalized 3D scan. It's the first time that I empath empathize with, like, uh, I come closer to a di the digital realm. And I think that all your projects have this uh, idea of um, conviviality and collective sharing uh, throughout uh, also the, the, not only the process, but also is, is shown in the final craft. Yeah. Um, yeah, that, I think I did a lot of experiments, uh, especially during the, the pandemic to think about how to do it online and to, to, to test on different platforms mm -hmm. because I think different platforms has different behaviors and um, it makes up to do different things. And um, yeah, it's a, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a very iterative process. I'm just wondering, like when you show the, pro the uh, plans overlaying each other, um, we almost see the tracing of what it's underneath. I think that the main question is like how to use also for the students that we're working in the next two weeks, how can we use photogrammetry as a tool to design actually um, rather than representing? The, the path that is, how, how do we use, um, I'm trying to understand your question. Um, so how do we actually, um, could you use photogrammetry not only as a tool to represent and to trace everyone's gestures or everyone's space, but to create and to design a space together? Mm. Um, 
are you asking this question as like how like a technical question how to do it or no just actually from your um, actually your your way of working at the moment uh, the final craft is this agglomeration of different fragments together mm-hmm. and i'm just uh, thinking how to use every single fragment not only um, as a singular entity but mm-hmm. as a process as a methodology to create and to design uh, which can be a space an object or a moment i'm not sure yeah that's a that's a very good question let me think about it what i'm so curious to know what kind of activities that students are doing at the moment because i i um and no not nasi was just um, mentioned that you guys were learning how to use the app clone just today with the students mm-hmm. and how did that turn out how do people feel about it we we were basically gonna revisit the idea of a tableau vivant but in a less kind of romantic way and uh, the idea of um, uh, adding to uh, the virtual canvas which we think can be a, a really ex- exciting way to share information as well uh, I think on, on like uh, Sabri's comment about the the lines and um, I have a I think the, the the way we use technology today as a way to reveal things that are already there and to make us aware of them um, I don't know in, in we can see it in your work but also in, in the work we want to do with the students it's something that's important and um, and I think there is uh, a lot of value to to use the technology as as a, as a media, mediator to kind of like different perspectives. I, I really like the in in one of the diagrams of the room when when the laptop is uh, hatched out uh, solid black, so it looks like the the column of the house, which is actually where all the activity of the space happens, is around the piece of technology and that kind of. Uh, defines the space around us. And I, I found those parallels super interesting. And yeah, an- another um, comment or like counter question uh, that I wanted to ask you is uh, um, how do you see like the, the idea of like the mesh and the polygon and uh, the idea of digitized files, uh, especially now with NFTs and all this digital data and and how the, the worth the value they have versus like physical materials that uh, a lot of uh, architecture is uh, spoken about as a, as a completely material means, but obviously there's a transition now happening with, uh, with, with all these kind of virtual worlds, which we, we, we kind of trying to, to enter and we're not sure what, how, what this thing is or what do we do with it, yeah. Yeah. So to reiterate, you're saying, how do, how do I view the, you know, the meshes, this virtual vertices mm-hmm. as a material and versus like in architecture, we look the material in the real world. How do yeah. I see this transition? Yeah, and also like as a, as a currency, as, a, as, a digital, as the digital currencies, you know, uh, like virtual uh, money, like there's obviously like uh, things on Sketchfab that are completely free. Uh, we, there was another talk a little on about the Google Warehouse, which is this completely open source platform. And mm-hmm. how, how do you see the work kind of evolving and um, the idea of the open source and something that has a real uh, value and in terms of, of currency? I, I'm interested in that and I don't know if you, if something that you thought about or yeah i think it's interesting like speaking of open source you know a lot of a lot of museums are putting their archive online for people to remix and reuse and i mean that also brings up a lot of question about um about um authority uh, also sorry authorship authorship who owns those data and who has the right to scan those data and and uh, who obtained those data? Um, and is it the companies that created this technology in the first place, 
or um, is it the where the artifacts was actually from? And even even we have so many different kinds of models and data online in on platform, like you said, Sketchfab. I don't think um, not everyone has the equal access to you know this technology to even able to download it or to reuse it to three D print them. That I think that are still not available for everyone. So I think there is still some kind of, um, um, I guess, differences between um, um, things that's like a digital file and the, the object that was being scanned. And, but I guess this brings up to what um, people like, um, uh, or the article like um, in defense of the poor image it's like some works that are, because this digital file is easier to, to transport, it's easier for people to have access to, but I guess there's just a lot of different, um, it's, it's a lot of different things to consider. Yeah. Um, and as for MIT, I'm not very familiar with it, so I'm not sure if I can well. offer too much insight. <laughs> no, me neither. Yeah. I was wondering if you, if you, could, if you were. Uh, yeah. yeah, but but I, I think I think the process of photogrammetry or digitizing tools, I think is very similar to how a sculptor working with with a material in their hand and like with like different different iterations, different combination, there's always something interesting happened. And so I think that's why I like to kind of do something repetitively, repetitively. It's almost like the, it's like this re repeat this manual labor, like the process of uh, scanning all the desserts is, it's very, um, it's, it's very long. And then in the end, I find myself kind of eat like how a computer would like to eat, like, Things like um, things like uh, cookies that's very um, dull. The surface is very rough. It's just easier to scan. So I wouldn't eat something that's like very reflective. And I also find the process of of uh, scanning or photogrammetry or specific software it's very similar to early photography. How we go into the dark room, you know, we have different steps that we need to do. Um, uh, and if the chemical expulsion time wasn't right, then you go back a step. And then there is always some kind of reveal at the end. And I find that process or that comparison to other mediums very interesting. I wanted to, to make another comment. I feel that something that differentiates your work uh, that, that makes it different than purely, let's say, 3D modeling or purely virtual archives, is that it seems to me that your work has a peculiar relationship with physicality. And I mean that it seems to me that you, on one hand, rely on physical objects as sources, but then you're also like your objective. It seems that you're using virtual realms and 3D scanning as a mean to somehow address physical relationships. And I found it very nice, especially when it came to the knitting, to the collective knitting club, uh, even like to the to the rituals of habit. In a way, how all these virtual process processes were oriented towards the understanding of physical interwinings and relationship in between people, how they were oriented towards like a reality, not only as a source but as an objective. And I somehow wanted to ask you, like, if this was my reading, or is it really something? that you will somehow keep in mind while, while doing it. So you're saying my process a lot of times, I mean, uh, it's make it, go ahead. No, 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 I'm, uh, what, what it seems to me that even though you're showing us like project that as outputs are, they seem purely virtual, they seem to me really grounded into physical relationships and settings, not only as, like, as you said, well, the amazing thing of 3D scanning a stone is that you can be inside the stone or that you can reveal and you can fix in, fix in space, even the virtual space, the path of someone in a room. Mm -hmm. It seems to me that 
also the objective is really physical so that the projects are grounded into physical relationships. Yeah, yeah, thank you for that reflection. Um, I think um, for, for knowing together is, you know, is literally people learning about how to, you know, give and receive attention and physical care from other people. So, um, and then there's a big group of people, it's 40 people coming together to do the workshop. And um, uh, so, yeah, like you said, it's a, it's, it's a very, it's using it in a very physical, very embodied way. And, but then COVID happened that I had a lot of idea of trying to do different iterations before COVID, but then COVID happened. And so I think meeting club is, it's like a next step to think about how we can experience something together, like this, this, this bodily experience of walking or doing the same thing, but in different room. And how can I kind of have everyone to do something together and while recording what they are doing together. And so I guess for me that the physical aspect of it um, is that, and also I think um, the, the ability to do that is also because the, the medium itself is so accessible, it's just photos um, and everyone can do that. So um, it's just very easy to create some kind of participatory experience with a lot of people together. Yeah. Thank you, Rosalie. So I think that if um, all the students will receive uh, all the details of your website uh, and the recording as well of the lecture. So we just really hope to show you the work in progress uh, throughout these two weeks. And um, thank you for joining. We send you best yeah. wishes from Venice. <laughs> yes. Thank you for the questions. Thank you for your time. Um, feel free to reach out for any questions. Good luck. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you very much.